Uh, so uh, we've already had kind of like this Zoom recording section uh, where I kind of post the videos from each of our class sessions where we introduce new material. Uh, but what's new here is uh, we have this section called homework review and catch up videos. And so this is where I'm putting the video recordings for our Friday review sessions when we go over homework and also additional videos that I've created that go over older homework. Um, so everything from unit one uh, should be covered in this section. So I know there are a few students, I think especially in this period where you added the class late and so you may have missed the class content to do some of these homework assignments. Um, and it's gonna be really important that you kind of catch up on those if you're, especially if you wanna take the AP exam. So uh, again, uh, late work is always accepted in my class. So all you have to do uh, to make up the unit one assignments is to find the corresponding video, watch it, follow along and complete the assignment and then just resubmit it. All right, uh, other updates. So uh, before we went on the fall break, we, we found out that they had canceled the AP exam payments that uh, where you could come on campus to the ASB. And um, yeah, they canceled those dates and then they kind of told us that they were looking at online payment options as well. So yesterday, I believe they approved a method for you to pay online. We're just waiting on confirmation from Dr. Salazar uh, to get more details about it. Um, the payment deadline has changed though, so it's no longer November, it's now March 3rd for next year. Uh, full price exams are $95, but for NIMSI tests, uh, it's gonna be something like 44 or something like 42. I, I can't remember the exact amount, but it's around $40. Uh, free and reduced lunch price exams are still 10. Uh, for the online payments, I believe there is a $2 fee, but I'm waiting to hear back um, confirmation on that as well. So as I get that information confirmed, I'll kind of relay that to you. Are there any questions about um, AP test stuff, uh, NIMSI stuff in general? Because uh, if I don't know the answer, I could always ask. So I'm waiting on a few different questions. I had, let's see, here's the questions I've already kind of sent in. So I, some people, um, even if they have free reduced lunch, the $10 per exam, like if you're taking, you know, all AP classes and you're, you know, $60 is still gonna be a lot of money to someone. Um, so I'm asking if there's additional financial aid, because in the past I know Suhai Foundation has helped out. Um, I'm also asking what's the exact NIMSI price for the full price exams. It's I know it's $40, something around $40, but I wanna get the exact price for you all. Um, and then I heard about the $2 fee but it wasn't clear if that was $2 per test or $2 per transaction. To me, it would make more sense that it was per transaction, but the way that um, Dr. Salazar presented it seemed like it was per test. So I'm gonna find out that information. Let me know if you have any other questions for me to kind of uh, throw his way, and I'll update you all on that as I get the information. Um, other updates. Let's see, so Zoom, I know some people are still having audio issues and I checked in with the district about potentially um, having you guys able to download the application and they were supposed to push that out, but I don't think they have. So if you are having audio issues um, in the interim, I'm sorry, but uh, you, can, you can do this, you can dial in to our meeting and get audio over the phone. Uh, let's see, do you know when the NIMSI money reward from last year will be distributed? So when I asked that question, um, the answer was so by sometime in October. So if by the end of this month you still don't get anything, let me know and I can check in with them again. But the last I heard it was like October, sometime in October. And I believe you get it because it's an Amazon gift card. You just get it through whatever email you registered with them. So, yeah. All right, any other questions? 
Okay, so um, last time where we left off was uh, we had a, a second checkpoint for our application projects. And that second checkpoint was that you were supposed to build out all of your screens on code.org on lesson four, right? Uh, so I went and I graded those. And uh, if it was applicable, I kind of gave you some feedback on what you still had to do in order to get, uh, in order to be ready for the programming phase. So here's kind of an overview of where everybody's at. So it looks like most of you are pretty much ready for the programming phase. Uh, in some cases, you might have some ele elements on your user interface that you still need to give meaningful IDs to, but you're still pretty much ready for programming. Um, if you see your name like in teal, it means that you're, you're not quite done building out your application screens. Either you haven't started or you still need to add at least one, one uh, user interface screen. And so you need to have that done before we get to programming in your applications. And then if you're kind of in the silver phase, that means that I haven't really seen any work from you. Uh, it might be that you've been working, but you just haven't submitted anything, so I couldn't give you any feedback. Uh, so if you're in the teal or silver phase, you need to make sure that um, during this week, you kind of get caught up. Uh, this week's office hours will be dedicated to working on the project, so please show up if you are still in the teal or silver phase, if you still need to work on your projects. This week, uh, we will be learning about programming, but we won't be working on the projects. We're going to be learning programming through um, through code.org, looking at some of the applications that they have developed. So again, you're not kind of, you're not working on your projects, we're working on prefabbed applications. And today you actually won't have any homework. So for those of you who do need to catch up, that'll be an opportunity for you to spend time on your projects. All right, so today we are gonna get started with lesson six. We're skipping over lesson five. And lesson six is all about introducing you to programming. So let's go ahead and um, we'll go ahead and throw this in the chat. Here's a direct link to uh, lesson six. So again, we're gonna get familiar with what programs are and how they run, basically how the code actually works by using these applications and also by modifying the code to see what happens. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and click continue here. And um, so I'm gonna go over some of the features that we'll see that is a little bit new. So one thing is uh, you might, as you're coding, kind of like break stuff, and that's totally okay if you break your code um, because we want to experiment and we wanna be able to like kind of be curious, break stuff, see what happens. Uh, if your code ever breaks uh, beyond repair, you can always click on version history right here. And you could either restore like your last working copy, or you could just start over from the starter code. So I'm gonna click start over just because I was working, I added some stuff last period. Okay, um, other stuff is that you'll notice uh, kind of what you used to, what you had last lesson, which is, uh, the application screen right here, the kind of like fake cell phone screen. Uh, and this is where your user interface would usually be. Uh, for this one, it's it's blank. Um, but what's new is that now you have like this toolbox that has some some sections here. And right now you only have two tools in your toolbox. And that's because we kind of want to like introduce these different pieces of code little by little, so that not to overwhelm you. So, so far we have comments, which we use to kind of like add notes to ourselves about how the code actually works. And then you also have this function, which is called console.log. <clears throat> and whatever you put in between the parentheses here is actually gonna print to what's called the console. And down here is the console. And why would you want to print stuff to the console? It's basically because uh, a programmer sometimes uh, wants to know, you know, what values, what values a, a program has at a given time. 
because if the program's not working quite correctly, like it's getting the wrong value or it's not doing the right thing, like you're clicking on a button and nothing's happening, you might want to print out a message to see if it's even reaching that part of the code. So this, uh, this down here is uh, basically for the programmer, not for the user. <clears throat> All right, so uh, what we want to do here is we want to run this program and we want to see what it does. So let's go ahead and uh, so there's one other element here before I run it. Uh, there's this little slider down here. Uh, one edge is a turtle, which means that it's going to go super, super slow. The other edge is a rabbit, which means it's going to go super fast. I'm going to slide it over to the turtle so it will execute very slowly and we can kind of see what's happening line by line. All right, so I'm going to click it and it will highlight each line as it goes. So here it'll print high. Next thing it'll print is this is a very simple program and then you can display text in quotes, but you can also display numbers like this. Then it's going to print out the number 100. And last, it's going to print out try adding some code of your own below. All right, so one more time, let me run it. So notice that it's executing in order. It's going line by line, it's not skipping anything. So this is a very par very particular type of program called a uh, sequential program. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and add that. I'm gonna add that as a note here. So this is a sequential program. And what that means is that the code runs in order, line by line, until the end. So it doesn't skip anything, right? It doesn't go, you know, to line five and then to line two. It, it goes in sequential order. Uh, we will see next class an example of something that's not a sequential program. So it's important that we kind of know the difference between the two. Uh, the next thing that I want to point out is what's the data types that we see here. So uh, it says right here, why do you think some information is in quotes and some is not? Um, it turns out that quotes are used for a very, very specific data type. So here's one example that's in quotes. And anytime you see quotes, the stuff that's in between it is a particular type of data called a string. And string data is basically like anything you would consider like a word, a sentence, or any sequence of characters really. Um, so notice that you could put stuff other than letters, like you put an exclamation mark in here, a comma. You can even put um, characters from a different language. Uh, you could put anything you could type on a keyboard really. And that's considered a string as long as you put quotation marks around it. Uh, but you could also put just numbers. Notice how the number here does not have quotes. So this is considered numerical. Okay, uh, numerical. So numerical data doesn't get quotes around it. Now, could you put a number as a string? Sure, if I put quotes around this 100, then it would be treated as like a word instead of a number. Um, but the key here, is that there are two types of data being represented, string type and numerical. And they can both be printed to our console here. Okay, uh, so what we wanna do now is we wanna add two lines of code. We wanna add uh, one line that will display a string, meaning that we need quotation marks around whatever we put in, and then one that displays a number. So something that does not have quotation marks. So in order to do this, there's actually a couple ways to do this. Um, so some people may have some experience programming. Other people, this is like your very first exposure. So the reason why I like using code.org is that it will allow you to do block-based programming, like how I have it set up now. Or if you're more experienced, you can program in text mode so that you don't have to necessarily use the box. Um, for those of you who are new, you're gonna wanna stay in block mode um, or not, <laughs> it's up to you. If you feel like uh, you're up for the adventure, you can go into text mode. Uh, so for those of you who are in block mode, you could just kind of click and drag this over 
Um, if you're in text mode, you could still click and drag. It's just going to um, convert it to text for you. Let me go ahead and clear the screen. So what we want to do is we want two of these console.log blocks. And the first one, we want to display some sort of string. So something in quotation marks here. So uh, for instance, you can put like your name if you want to do that. Uh, you can put some sort of message like hello or whatever. Um, and then for the second console.log, we want to put some sort of number. So we want to get rid of the quotes. And you can put whatever you want. You can put your favorite number, your lucky number, uh, your age, your year in school. I'm going to put the year that I was born, so 1983. And so the objective here, again, is to drag in two of these console.log uh, statements. For the first one, you're going to put a string. Second one, you're going to put a number. And then if I run this, I'm going to go ahead and make this execute quickly. It'll now print out my string and my number as well. So I'll give you a moment, if you haven't done so already, to go ahead and add two of those console.log statements. The first one should have a string, and then the second one should have a number. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll pause here for a little while so that you can get that done. And once you're done with that, go ahead and put a four in the chat to let me know that you are done. All right, so it looks like a lot of us are finishing up. Uh, let's go ahead and if you if you haven't finished it, don't worry, I'll be posting the video. So if you kind of missed what we did, you can rewatch. Uh, but the next step now is to click finish so that your bubble up here will turn green. And our next activity is going to introduce a new statement. Let me go ahead and start mine over. Okay, so now you'll notice that we actually have stuff in the user interface this time. In the last exercise, it was blank because we were just kind of illustrating the console.log, which was printing down here. Now, in this program, we'll see that we still have console.log to kind of print out when the program starts and ends. And that's just to kind of let the programmer know, you know, this started up and now we're done. Um, but in the middle here, we see some other statements called a set property. And this is a function, set property. Uh, notice that it takes three different things. Uh, but what we want to kind of figure out is like what this is actually doing. So before I kind of describe what these, what, what's going on here, Oh, okay. You're in the waiting room. Oh, is that Terrence? Oh, okay, I see. Thank you. All right, so sorry, y'all. Uh, so set property. Before I kind of explain how set property works, what we're going to do is we're going to run this program and see what the effect is. And you're going to try to observe and figure out how is what is set property doing? How is it different than what console.log is doing? Okay, so I'm going to make sure that um, this is executing very slowly again. And I'm going to click run, and you'll see that, you know, console.log is going to go ahead and print starting my program. But then something different is going to happen over on this side. So we'll kind of observe what's going on. And then finally, we're at our other console.log, and it's going to print. So let's watch that one more time. So. Pay attention to when it gets to set property, how it changes stuff over here. Okay, so now I want you to take a minute 
and think about uh, what is the difference between console.log and set property? I want you to really focus on what you saw changing in the application. So take a moment and think about that and go ahead and add, yeah, you can add your answer to the chat. Thank you, Mason. I'm just going to pause here and give other people to, uh, a chance to add their answer as well. All right, so um, the question that I was asking is, what was the difference that you saw between console.log and set property? So let's take a look at some of your answers here. So Mason says it, uh, that set property changes size and text, keeps the color the same. Uh, Jason says it changes the theme and text size with the console log is giving orders to do something. And then Jose says it changes the color of the box and changes the text. So all of these are really good starting answers, yeah. So all of you kind of observed that set property is actually changing stuff with, that has to do with the user interface. Um, so that stuff is called properties. Um, console.log just prints information to the console. And that stuff is not visible to the user, so this, stuff right here. This is for our purposes only, for the programmer's purpose only. Uh, when this application, for instance, gets, you know, handed off to the user, they don't see all this stuff. This is just for the programmer to, to check stuff. Um, set property, however, does change stuff on the actual application screen. And again, like I said, that stuff is properties. What the heck are properties? Well, let's take a look at each of these lines. So um, for this first line, it says set property, and then you have these three values here. So the first value here is big button. What the heck is big button? <laughs> well, if I look over here, if I put my mouse over the screen, big button is the ID of this button on the screen, okay? So the first thing that we put here is the ID of the element that we want to change the property of, okay? The next thing we see is the actual property that we want to change. So in this line, we're going to change the background color of big button. And the third value is the, the, what we're going to change it to. So what this is saying is set the property of big button's uh, background color to blue. And as we run this, we'll see that it does change it to like a darker blue here. There we go. Um, and then the next thing it does on line three is now it's going to set the property of big button's height to 200 pixels. And that's going to be a little bit larger than what we see here. So let's run that again. So first we'll see it turn to a dark blue, the background turned to a dark blue. Then we'll see the height of this button get larger or higher. And the last thing we're going to see on line four, it says set the property of big button's text to now it's a bigger button. So this text in the button is actually going to change from this is a big button to now it's a bigger button. So let's go ahead and run that one last time. So first the background color of the button changes to a dark blue, then the height gets larger to 200 pixels, and then the text changes to now it's a bigger button. Okay. So again, to summarize that, set property changes the property of some element in the application. And you have to specify the element name, the actual property, 
and then what you want to change that property to. So it takes three different value, three different values. Okay, so now our job is to um, modify this program so that we're adding in one console.log and one set property. So what I'm going to do is since we have so many set properties that changes a uh, big button, I notice that there's one other element on this screen and that element is screen one. And so it's going to be like all this, this screen one right now has like the background color of yellow. I'm going to see if I can change that background color. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drag this over. And if you're in block mode, what's really nice is that if you click this, uh, this arrow, it'll actually give you a list of all the IDs you can pick from. So this time I'm going to pick screen one. And then if I click the second arrow, it'll show me all the different um, properties I can change for, for this particular element. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick background color. So last, I want to uh, determine what color do I want to change the background color. And it'll give me some values. And th this is not like a total uh, comprehensive list. It'll give you like a few different things you can put. But I want to change it to black. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type in black here. And it will recognize that. All right. Uh, I also want to drag in a console log. So I'm going to drag it right before my set property and I'm going to put in the sentence um, changing changing uh, screen one's background color to black. All right so it's going to print that out to my console and then I'll actually see it happen in my application. So let's go ahead and run that and verify that that's what happens. So again, it's going to do the original stuff, which is changing this to dark blue, changing the height to 200, and then changing the text. And then it's going to get to my code, where it's going to actually change screen one's background to black. There we go. So now you're going to want to do uh, the same thing. So take a minute or so, if you haven't done so already, you're going to drag in one console.log and you're going to like put a sentence of what you're planning to do and then you're going to go over to UI controls and you're going to drag in set property and select uh, the ID, the property you want to change, and then what you want to change that property to. And once you've done that you can go ahead and put a four in the chat and this will be the last thing that we do today. All right, so it looks like you all have that added. Uh, this is the last thing we're gonna do today. So go ahead and click finish so that that bubble will turn green. Next class, we're gonna take a look at examples of non-sequential programming, something that's called event-based programming, which will enable you to uh, add functionality to your buttons as well. Um, so let me know if there's any questions. I will be posting the video of today's class session on Google Classroom after class today. Uh, there's no homework, but again, if you hadn't finished the project checkpoint where you had all of your screens created on code.org, uh, that will be your homework to catch up on that.
Um, and then again, I have unit one homework videos posted here. So if you have any old work to make up, you can also work on that. Okay, so if there's no questions, uh, you all are free to go to lunch and I'll see you all on Thursday.